Thank you for having me. This is my fourth time to be here, and I would hope that I have the ability to make an impact each time that I'm here. My name is Jade Dickens. I am a 20 plus year uh, female strength competitive athlete. I participate in powerlifting, strongman, moss wrestling, and arm wrestling. So I have a humongous gamut of experience in the athletic world. Um, at this point in time, of course, I do pay to play because I live in one of the greatest countries in the world. I have the ability to go out and sign up for any sport that I want to and pay the membership and show up and do the best that I can. I have a medal. I brought it today mainly to symbolize this. I'm not dusting this off. This was one Saturday. As I competed, I received a text message from Mary Elizabeth that asked, Jade, we're talking about this again. Can you come? I said, absolutely. I'll be there. And here I am. And I brought this to represent had a man stepped into the, my playing arena at my same age, I am 49. I am one of the top bench pressers in the world. If a man of my age, my size, who had been training for over 20 years, had stepped into, that, into my arena with me, he would have taken me out soundly. I benched this weekend 345 pounds. The common average male benches 315. That is my size. Now, as we were talking about on the bell curve, if he trained the 20 years that I have trained, he would be benching between seven and 800 pounds. I can't compete with that. So what is one of the things that I want to really and truly ask of the committee is find out why this has taken place. Why do men have to step into female sports? Why are men not able to be accepting of a man in a dress that wants to wear makeup and still allow him to compete in the sport he wishes to compete in? Why are women being forced to accept this? I did not know that Riley was gonna be here today. She's actually part of my speech. Texas Penal Code 21.08, indecent exposure. He is reckless about whether another person is present who will be offended or alarmed by his act. What Leah Thomas did by exposing himself in that locker room is punishable by law, by our own Texas law. Meaning that the people that allowed him to do that by proxy could also be punished by Texas law. That's how serious this is for women and that men and administrators are not taking this seriously. I am an athlete for USAPL. I'm not here representing USAPL. I am only a member. And if anybody knows, we just lost a lawsuit in Minnesota. The court's comment for the reasoning for favoring on J.C. Cooper's side was increased risk of depression and suicide, lack of access to coaching and practice facilities, or other performance suppression common to transgender persons as competitive disadvantages for transgender com competitors. These are the same issues that women have been dealing with for centuries. Why is it that 1% of the population 
is allowed to have this much attention and to be forced into 55% of the population's private spaces. Why? If the issue is truly about acceptance, why does it fall to women to be the one that has to be the one to accept the change? Why can't men accept some men want to dress and be more feminine? Women are accepting to other women that wish to present as men. Women's sports are for biological women. We have no advantage. You don't see the other way around. You don't see trans going from female to male demanding to be placed in sports or demanding to go into locker rooms or demanding to go into bathrooms. Why is that? Ask yourself why? Why do we as women have to accept this? Thank you for your time and thank you for having me. Thank you so much for your testimony. Members, are there any questions? Senator Middleton, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, Jay, if maybe you could talk about kind of, um, you said 20 years, you know, you've been, you've been competing for 20 years. Um, how much has gone into that? How much time, sacrifices? You know, I, I think that's the thing that sometimes gets lost in all of this is to pursue these opportunities. And when you started pursuing, you assume fairness. What other opportunities did you give up, right? I mean, that's one of the things that is really not discussed that often in this issue where uh, it's a sacrifice, you know, to compete at an elite level. Um, and, and it's something that um, takes many, many years of work to be able to achieve that elite level that you have and everyone testifying here today. So Absolutely. I, I train three to four days a week, two to three hours at a time. That's pretty standard. But that also takes away from family time. My family is good enough to me to know that this is my hobby. I've actually declined promotions because I knew that a promotion would mean more time spent at work. And that would mean less time in the gym and less time with my family. Uh, powerlifting has allowed me to travel internationally. I have represented the United States in 10 different countries. I've been able to expose my whole family to different cultures, to different ways of the world, just because of my hobby. Not because of my work or my career, but because of my hobby. And it's something that I truly love and don't ever plan on stopping.